What's up, everybody? This is Trista. Please subscribe to This League. Tap the bell, comment below, and give us a like. On this episode of This League, we get into some quick news around the league. And boy, oh boy, did more things come out about Nate Bjorkren and the Pacer organization. So we dig in to what has become a coordinated conspiracy, an anti-Pacer conspiracy. Uh, and speaking of pace, we talk about the pace of play in the league and how different contenders stack up quite differently. It's pretty shocking uh, when we get into it. And then we also get into a few listener DMs. All right, Marty. Drop the beat. Let's get into a little news around the league. I'm not sure if you watched it, Marty, but D. Rose performance for the ages. Yeah, he looks really good. He just he looks insane. Man, 32 years old. I think it's fair to say this is going to be seen as a hot take, but I think it's fair to say if D. Rose was still a piston, the Knicks would be a play in team right now instead of the four seed. He certainly made a difference. Yeah, Huge yeah, yeah. difference. The Knicks were, let's just go into how much of a difference. Knicks <laughs> were 11 and 14 when D Rose came into the team and they made a move. Okay. So three games under 500, mm -hmm. you could extrapolate that out. That is not great. <laughs> uh, let's, confirmed, yeah. Confirmed, not a playoff caliber <laughs> team. Uh, so let's talk about what D Rose was up to before said trade. He was pretty much, I would say, league-wide left for dead. Yeah. Playing in Detroit, playing in a garbage organization and garbage minutes for said organization. In just a grim situation that no one saw like anything positive coming out. I mean, Blake hadn't been let go yet. There was just nothing positive coming out of there. And there was no path forward. Right. There was yeah. a point in time where they were like, we're just going to stop using you moving forward. Yeah. It was uh, tense. We'll say. And I think that D Rose did not want to be there. He was happy to he was he was mentoring Killian Hayes. And I don't know if necessarily that's like it's not bad, but is that <laughs> if that's your only job, if that's your only job, I don't know necessarily if that's a good thing. He's For, not he's not quite at the Jared Dudley stage of his career. Correct. At all. He still yeah. has some juice left into the tank tank, but people were like, he is a shell of his former self. He is washed. He doesn't deserve to be in the league anymore. Everyone was just pretty much like, oh, sad for D Rose, cautionary t tale D Rose. Everyone except for Tom Thibodeau. Tom Thibodeau <laughs> literally pulled him from the grave, rescued him, threw him a lifeboat. And at that time, when it happened, I was like, this is such a cute Tom Thibodeau thing to do. You know, just a nice guy doing <laughs> nice things for his crew. You know, Tom Thibodeau always takes care of his crew. Yeah. And that's all I thought about it at the time. I was like, oh, he'll get some backup minutes. Like, it'll be cool, like 10, 15 minutes. Who knows what's going to happen with the manual quickly? Like, does that mean that Tibbs doesn't really like quickly? Yeah, we did a whole, uh, we did a whole set. I don't know if we did a whole segment on it, but we definitely had a clip on it yeah. where uh, all we were just talking about was the D Rose Thibodeau love story. And Correct. that's, but that's all we were talking about. I don't think we mentioned basketball much in that segment. For sure. <laughs> like, yeah. For sure. It was like, it went though from a heartwarming, feel good, take care of your guy kind of move to what looks like one of the more savvy basketball moves this year. Seriously. Yeah. He has been balling, balling. What is more surprising to me, though, is like how Derrick Rose is actually getting these buckets. He has decided, I don't care if the mid range is not efficient. I don't care that you guys as a league and, you know, analysts and statisticians think that the mid range is is a dead spot on the court. That's where I'm shooting from. That is what I'm doing. <laughs> Nine for 10 in the first half against the Clippers all in the mid range, just as Jamal Crawford said, Derek Rose just thugging it out on all twos. <laughs> <laughs> That's what he was doing, thugging yeah. it out. Yeah. They are 22 and 10 in the games that Derek Rose has played in. Man. And what's insane is anyone could have picked him up. Anyone. Right. Yeah. Lakers, Clip. I mean, anyone could have saved him. Anyone could have used him. Play, how many playoff teams do you think right now would like what D Rose, what they just saw from D Rose against the Clippers? A, could use a backup guard like that who can kind of do everything? Uh, several. 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 I'm sure I could name like four. Easy. The Lakers would like him right now. Yeah. With D, D, uh, Dennis Schroeder being out. Mm -hmm. I'm sure the Clippers would love to have him. Yeah. Right now. 
I'm sure that the Nuggets would like him Nuggets right now. Milwaukee. Milwaukee. Yep, to back up Drew. A lot of teams could be using, Miami could use him if Dragic goes down, which, you know, he's always down. So it's been, in, it, it's been remarkable in the most positive possible way. Po- he's 14, 2, and 4 does not describe the impact that he has on the team. He was the guy. He was the reason that that next team beat the Clippers. It was sort of stunning. He even talked about how impactful he has been off the court with some of those young guns as well after the game. All right, Derek Rose is with us, 25 points. So, Derek, you get traded to the Knicks yes. February 8th. Did you know right away, boy, this, this looks like a lot different Nick team, and it looks like a Tom Thibodeau team? Yeah, um, I kind of knew that. I mean, even before we, um, before I went there during the preseason, we played them two times back to back, and I saw that. Um, I saw they had a young group, and um, it was great for me to go there, um, get some of that young blood, get some of that young energy, and just try to help these guys by mentoring them and being a vocal and working on myself. And like that's being a vocal. I never talked as much in the past. Wow. And um, I'm steady trying to get better and. Um, as a player, and um, it's going to help me in the offseason. Yep. So that is, I don't know if you can hear it, but his voice is trembling. Mm-hmm. I don't know if it's emotion. I don't know if Derrick Rose is a shy human, but it sounds like he's been, as he said, more vocal than he has been in his entire career. Yeah. Mentoring R.J. Barrett, men- mentoring Emmanuel Quickly, doing some mentoring of Julius Randle. He has been the old head in the locker room, making sure that everyone's going according to the Tibbs vision, but also helping folks just get better. Yeah. I love emotional D Rose. You remember after he scored 50 in Minnesota? Yeah. I love emotional D Rose. Me too. U- ultimately D Rose is one of my favorite players when he's healthy. He's just so much fun to watch. He's probing. <laughs> I mean, his three-point shooting has now come along as well. In the Clipper game, 25 points, 11 for 17, 5 for five and 8. He is now leading the dangerous Knicks into the playoffs. I don't know. I think the Knicks could go far. The way they're playing right now, they could go far. I mean, it looks like they're going to host a series. Wait, <laughs> that's pretty sick. Yeah. I mean, could anybody even imagine that? Looks like they're going to be playing four or five. I think that they make light work of the Atlanta Hawks. They're playing well, but yeah, ooh, that's going to be fun. Fun. Ooh. Light work of the Atlanta Hawks. Not You can probably get joke. good value on that on the Knicks. Mm-hmm. Ooh. Good betting right. opportunity. Right. Good betting opportunity. So then his impact, let's talk about his impact. In general, his the Knicks efficiency differential when Rose is on the floor is plus 11.9, according to Cleaning the Glass. That is top 4% of all NBA players. Whew. Damn. Yeah. And we can assign all the, the credit to Tom Thibodeau, but really this was a Leon Rose move. Leon Rose is the one signing off on all of these roster changes. And most people, let's just be honest, thought this was a garbage move. Like nobody thought this was going to be meaningful in any way. They thought it was a warm, heartwarming story and had nothing to do with basketball. Mm -hmm. But I mean, that's kind of the deal. I think uh, we were like, oh, you know, we'll see how we'll fit on a young roster, blah, blah, blah. How does this stunt everyone's growth? What does this mean for the young Knicks team and their timeline? And... It appears that they knew what they were getting, right? It appears that they knew that when D. Rose was healthy, he was dangerous. He was lethal. He said that, Tibbs said that the only time Rose ever played poorly in his entire career has been when he's hurt. (laughs) I mean, I think that's kind of true. Yeah. I mean, he would, he'd be one that could make that call. Like For for sure. sure. He's He's been there for most of it. Yeah, He's seen him a lot. Even in Detroit. D. Rose constantly prays for his veteran veteran leadership, grooming Pistons draft pick, like I said, Killian Hayes. So I think being a mentor to quickly another young guns is not shocking, but I think that all the buckets, consistent buckets are shocking. So uh, watching D. Rose get buckets against one of the best defensive teams in the NBA at 32 years old. Like I think the Clippers <laughs> were supposed to put clamps on D. Rose. 
and yeah. that he was having none of that. He yeah, was, that's how it was supposed to go. That but, was how yeah. it was supposed to go. It was supposed to go kind of like how the Suns were supposed to beat the Lakers. Yeah, we can uh, we we'll, can move on from that. We'll move on to that. <laughs> it was bad though. It was bad though for all the listeners. I'm scared. Yes, I'm. Sh- I am not sure where the where the Knicks would be without D Rose. I was thinking about. It. I think they'd be like a nine or a ten seed. I think they're that much better. And I'm not saying just because of what he's doing on the court. I think in terms of the development of the young guys and what quickly has said, what RJ has said, and how much they're gelling. I think D Rose. Low key, super valuable to this Knicks organization. Um, let's move on. We got a little chitty chat drama between Kitty Cat, Kitty Cat, and Jimmy Buckets. Call me Kitty Cat. <laughs> I just can't. People were mad when I called Carl Anthony Towns Kitty Cat, but I just, I just won't stop. I mean, he already like kind of calls himself that. So. I think so too. Yeah. I just can't stop, won't stop. You know what I mean? Rockefeller Bang Bang. I'm not going to stop calling Carl Anthony <laughs> Towns Kitty Cat. It's just now what's happening. And we also now have Aunt Edwards in the mix too, uh-huh. coming to Carl Anthony Towns rescue like only Aunt Edwards can. So a little background for folks who are not up to speed. Jimmy Buckets and Carl Anthony Towns were teammates in Minnesota, actually with Tom Thibodeau. Butler Mm -hmm. was consistently unhappy given that Carl Anthony Towns and Wiggins were, how would you put it? (laughs) Hmm. Not giving effort all the time. I believe he said soft. Yep. Those were his words. Lazy, soft. And so then Jimmy was holding out. Jimmy's like, this is broken. I want you guys to give me a chance to actually win. And the organization was like, yeah, yeah. We're not going to give you those assurances. Mm -hmm. So Jimmy was like, yeah, yeah. Fuck you, basically. So then the organization tells Jimmy, you must attend practice. And he was like, why? Because we need you to attend practice, Jimmy. (laughs) And he's like, well, I don't really appreciate being told what to do because Jimmy is Jimmy, right? I don't like authority. Don't fucking tell me what to do. And they're like, you will be going to practice. So Jimmy goes to practice and then with the third team, busts everybody's ass and they win. Right. It was this whole drama filled thing. He then has an interview set up with Rachel Nichols right after. Yeah, that bothered me. That I'm sure did. (laughs) However, though, Jimmy said that was booked weeks in advance. Mm -hmm. You don't believe him, but (laughs) the timing was a little sus, we'll say. Goes to the practice, all this chatter's popping, and he's got an interview playing on playing on ESPN NBA countdown kind of a deal. It was great theater. Great theater. He is calling Carl Anthony Towns and Wiggins. This is why I always bust your ass every time. I, every time I switch on you, you pass. Blah blah blah. So we'll say that there is a uh, bad blood, bad blood mm-hmm. between Carl Anthony Towns and Jimmy Butler. Forced his way out, made his way to Philly, then made his way to Miami. Right. Mm-hmm. So Miami then plays Minnesota Friday night, and I thought to myself, huh, I wonder. I wonder if this will be anything. It was something. (laughs) It was something. So Miami, who I've said has been very inconsistent all year, I thought to myself there was a chance that Minnesota can compete. But man, Jimmy was putting the clamps on. Jimmy was talking hella shit. And it all came to a head close to the end of the game when Butler said that Carl Anthony Towns was a loser. And he had already punked him once. And then he capped it off with classic Jimmy Butler, you're soft as baby shit. So, okay. Which he stole from This Is The End, the movie. Correct. But I still, like, (laughs) also, as an aside, calling Carl Anthony Towns right now, baby shit soft, given everything that Carl Anthony Towns has gone through off the court, we'll just say he was meaning it around basketball, right? Yeah. So then Carl Anthony Towns responds... To Butler, and he says, you better call Rachel Nichols. <laughs> <laughs> Love that. Love it. That is the best chirp. That's the best part. So the microphones picked up the conversation, and he was like, okay, the media is now being like, all right, what are we going to do with this? What are we going to do? We're going to ask Jimmy. We're going to ask him. So they, they, it's Ant and Carl Anthony Towns sitting next to each other at the podium. And they ask him, like, hey, what was going on? Emotions were high between you and Jimmy. What was that? Play the clip. Carl, there, there was um, 
microphones caught you and Jimmy having See, a little conversation to ask at this the question. end of the game? Do you, I mean, <laughs> was the, were, were your emotions running high at that point? What was kind of going through your head as that game came to an end there? They didn't even know what to say. Man, they grown man, dog. This is <laughs> Ann Edwards. Talking, having a regular conversation, but you ask me. I mean, if it's, if it's a – if y'all come to see us compete, it's, it's no competition if we're not talking shit to each other. You know what I'm saying? So mm-hmm. if whatever y'all can take that with a grain of salt – like I said, they grown as men, they having a conversation. Regular, regular ass regular conversation. conversation. Well, that's why we asked the question, Ann, just to yeah. try and get the get your guys' yeah. view on it, right? Re- regular so. conversation. That's regular conversation. <laughs> yeah. Nothing that's, else, nothing more. Nothing else, nothing more. That's what I'm gonna say when I shit talk somebody. It was just a regular ass conversation. You're a fucking loser. You're soft as baby shit. Go call Rachel Nichols. Regular ass conversation. Just two grown men just having a regular ass. Nothing ass, nothing more, nothing less. What do you think about Ant? Oh, I like him. I like the, when the 19 year old is like the rational one in the room. Yeah, like. I don't hey, know if rational is the word, but like seemingly. I don't know. It seemed like he was the sharpest one in that interchange. The, he's he's squashing the fire that it's very clear the media is trying to create. Yeah. They want Carl Anthony Towns so bad to say something more about Jimmy Butler. And Ant's like, listen, they grow man, dog. Like, get out of here with this fucking question. I love it. I love it. A regular ass conversation. I'm not sure that that was, though. So... This is real beef. This To me, this is real beef. These guys don't like each other. I don't think they ever will like each other. And I think, uh, like with not knowing who A-Rod is, when Ant finds out the background to this, because I don't think he knows quite what the he background may not. is. He may not. That's funny. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so he's like, what's up? what's up with y'all? What's up with y'all? Why is... <laughs> And he's like, here, let me send you this link. You know what this beef kind of reminds me of? It kind of reminds me of uh, Kobe Dwight. Yes. A little bit. Played together for one year. Just, yes. just didn't gel. Yeah. Yeah. And Kobe, I for, and also remember, there's now some little news coming out that James Harden asked to come off the bench in Houston so he didn't have to have any minutes with Dwight Howard. <laughs> I haven't seen that. He was like, yeah, can you just put me in? Can you just bring me in off the bench so that I can play with Clint Capella and that he can set screens for me? Because I don't want to play with Dwight. His screens are fucking garbage. He is garbage. He is soft. I think that's it's similar to everyone and Dwight Howard prior to his <laughs> fall. So safe to say this shit is not over between Cat, Kitty Cat, and Jimmy Buckets. And we'll be definitely keeping an eye on that more, especially now Aunt Edwards is probably going to come up to speed. So, all right. Another piece of news. I know this is... um. This is going to get you a little riled up, Marty. <laughs> a little bit. Sad news out of New Orleans. Actually sad. Zion, for the second straight year, has been hurt late in the season. Mm-hmm. Shut him down. The season's over for Zion. This time, fractured his ring finger out for the year. He was setting, he set a record for most points per game for a player shooting over 60%. 21. He is an unstoppable force. He was having his coming out party, but that's not really what this news is about. Nope. This news is really about how the Pelicans organization has reacted to Pel- to Zion's injury. So Stan Van Gundy, being the old man that he is, used Zion's injury to touch on an issue that has apparently been bugging him all year. I mean, there's been a lot of things <laughs> bugging Stan Van Gundy. Uh, I'm talking about how often they say Zion has been hammered this year. Pelicans executive David Griffin also went off after Zion's injury. He said that his the Zion's injury was a natural result of the way he's been officiated by the NBA refs this year. Yep, that's what he said. <laughs> that is what he said. He argued that Zion makes opponents play more physical against him. He the quote was this is the best. He's been absolutely mauled. Mm-hmm. Griffin and it said Stan Van Gundy and the staff. This is the best part that they were sending in video to the league all year, <laughs> showing how ridiculous these non non call fouls were. 
to save Zion, to protect Zion from potentially getting one of these injuries because it's not safe for Zion out there. <laughs> as long as these refs don't call these fouls, it's not safe. This is just some Mark Cuban bullshit. And like David Griffin, you don't have near the clout to do that. I mean, I guess you can do it, but I'm going to sit here and call it lame. And like, I'm sorry. Like, I know a lot of my following are big Pelicans fans, but this is just a lame move in my opinion. I just, I, I hate it. He's played 85 games. <laughs> like, the league also thought it was lame. <laughs> they fined them $50,000 for their comments. Mm -hmm. So I was thinking about this because I, I believe there is a, how would I put it? There is a large argument on both sides. There is a group that says Zion is always fouled. He's always mauled. He gets no calls, zero calls for Zion. And then there's another group that's like, no matter what we do, we can put our hands behind our back, be straight up vertical. I think this happened actually in the Minnesota game. Mm -hmm. And all of a sudden, they were putting our hands behind our back. We're staying vertical. And like somehow a phantom call gets called for Zion. Zion gets too many calls. Have you noticed that it's either no calls or too many calls? Uh, yeah, I would say I would say I have noticed that. It, I mean, he is refereed a little strange because no one else plays the game right now in the way he plays. So I understand there is an issue like we need to have a little more consistency. But my issue with the thing is, if you're going to say that this is what caused his hand injury, just shut the fuck up. And the best part was we're not sure if it was that contact, that one. Yeah. Or if it happened, or if like three weeks ago, it was a continuation injury, like a continuation foul. It's like, it just erodes. His finger was eroding over time. Yeah, I mean, that's... <laughs> that's how an injury goes. That's how goes. the human body that's works. That's how the like, human body goes. I don't know. There's just, there's so many players that... I think don't get calls that and Zion isn't even like up on that list for me. I think he gets plenty called. Like, I mean, let's see, I'll put, I'll put Shea up there. When I watch him, he gets killed. Uh, you know, I'm going to say Devin Booker doesn't get the respect he deserves. Even though Dame uh, is top five in free throws, I think he gets hit a lot. I would. Yeah. Yeah. I would put Dame, uh, CJ when he's playing a mm -hmm. lot, doesn't really get the respect he should. Uh, yeah, no, I think it's way more an issue with guards than it is just bulldozer forwards. Like, yeah. So how many foul calls does Zion get? You might ask. <laughs> he is, t is he, is he like. Just does never get getting any calls? Is he at the bottom of this list, Marty? No. Zion is top three in the NBA for free throws attempted this year. There are multiple articles about how Zion actually should be getting called and could be getting called for an offensive foul nearly every possession. Yeah, I mean, I... He is a bulldozer. I, yeah, I mean, I don't want to turn this into a full-on Zion like hate fest because I, like I Zion. No, 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 I do too. But he does kind of lean with the elbow a lot on his drives. Yeah, he does. He is well. He's so big. The he shoulder is so animation. strong. He is so powerful. And like he goes downhill, and it's like a fucking truck is coming your way. Mm -hmm. And then you get the blocking foul when it's really like a bulldozer that has squashed you like a little buck. Yeah. So Griffin said Zion's been getting beaten on more than anyone said Shaq. I don't know about that. It was egregious and horrific then, he says. The same is true now. Ah, hmm. That is just a quote for the ages. I don't, I don't like these GMs and these coaches coming out and saying these things and bitching and complaining. But if you're Zion, you have to feel like, these people are at least sticking up for me, yeah. you know. Hey, where were these comments when you were the assistant GM of the Suns, Mr. Griffin? If you're saying Shaq was being egregiously <laughs> the fouled. The big cactus, where, where were you? Where was this comment? Like, <laughs> Where were you protecting the big cactus? All the jumping choyas. So I would say this. If Zion wants more foul calls, Zion hasn't said a goddamn word about this. And maybe that's what. Part of it is, is that Zion's not complaining enough. If you want more foul calls, Zion, complain more. Sure. No, 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 no. I agree. I agree. Yeah. Do what LeBron did. Luka. Do what Luka does. Luka has. Trey. Trey. Luka's also top five in free throws attempted. And the reason, Trey also top five in, and because they all complain. Mm -hmm. They get a bad rap for it. It hurts their reputation. It hurts their likability. But at the same time. If you want the calls, you got to get up in those refs' face. Well, Trey's also smart. Trey's kind of figured out if, if like, if I just stop mid-drive, they're going to call. And Trey just kind of 
I, Luca too. With yeah, yeah, yeah. But with Trey, I think it's more like he just like outsmarted the refs. And for but Luca is just a complainer. Like Luca yeah. complains, but so KD. I was gonna put this in the news section, but it was too small. KD on his podcast basically said the same thing about Luca: is that Luca pretends <laughs> that he's not athletic. He's like plays. <laughs> he plays possum like he's slow, and then he gets around you, and then he stops short, and you've gone to chase him down because all of a sudden he's put the afterburners on. You're like, where the fuck did this speed come uh-huh. from? And then he slows down again. It takes advantage of the reaction. Takes advantage yeah. of the reaction time. Boom. Foul call. So listen, big men are strong and big. They're going to get hit on the arm. It's going to look less meaningful than a guard does. That's just the way it goes. So unless Zion complains, it's going to be a lot more ice bass for him in the next years unless they I guess change the rules possibly about what constitutes a flagrant foul. I think that was what also Griffin is asking for. Change <laughs> change these to be flagrants. <laughs> I don't think we need more flagrant fouls. No. I mean, did you see Luca? <laughs> Luca also got uh, ejected for the nut shot on Colin Sexton, which apparently another little tiny little sprinkle of news I didn't think about bringing up. What's up, everybody? This is Trista. Please subscribe to this league. Tap the bell, comment below, and give us a like. All right. Oh, man. Folks, 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 we have a world-class smear campaign on our hands. Something is happening in Indiana right now, and it is disgusting, (laughs) honestly. It is gross. It shows you everything that's wrong with the world, everything that is wrong with the NBA, a full narrative that has been manufactured, created, strategic, organized, take down. And I tell you what, Marty, it is fucking sus. <laughs> it is sus. So sus. The more you look into it, the more sus it becomes. That's what's crazy, mm-hmm. right? All right. It all centers around Nate Bjorkren the head coach for the Indiana Pacers. Been there just one year. We talked about this in our last episode. Woj bomb, lots of articles came out. Right? Yep. Since then, since just Friday, since just then, (laughs) shit has hit the fan even more. Even more. So, full-blown issue on our hands. Not only are these articles coming after Nate, though, now. They're coming after the front office of the Indiana Pacers. They are accusing the front office of not doing their due diligence. Why would they hire him? They didn't ask him any questions. They only asked him about basketball. They didn't look into his demeanor. They only, they only care about him and wanted to hire him because of their Iowa connections. I mean, it is a full Hmm. on, it is a thing. It is a thing. All right. So it all started where it all started with the Woj bomb. (laughs) This is the bomb. This is the sound of the Woj bomb, right? (laughs) If I was an investigator, that's where I would begin, Mm -hmm. right? Yeah. Because this is what we're looking at is who, what, where, when, and why. What's happening, right? Because it's not, we now know, and I'll talk about this in a minute. There's things that are coming out that are just not true. The Woj bomb, how does Woj get his information? It's given to him. Sometimes Woj does a little digging. Sometimes Woj receives a phone call, right? Yeah. Sometimes Woj is given information from a front office member or a former front office member or a former coach, X, X, Y, Z, right? Sometimes it's like an equipment guy. Woj has got his little fingertips everywhere, right? Yeah. Gets a call, gets a tip. And then he's like, am I going to detonate this Woj bomb or am I going to let it sit? Sometimes he lets it sit. Sometimes he detonates it. This one, he <laughs> detonated, right? Okay. Here's how I know that it's organized. There's misdirection. There's misinformation. Whatever you want to call it, unnamed sources. There's people outside the league talking about it and aimed at anyone and everyone associated with Nate Bjorkren. Anyone who, has, who Nate Bjorkren has touched ever, like in a ethereal kind of way, not like actually physically touched, right. but yeah. anyone <laughs> he's been in contact with professionally is now named in this article. Multiple hit pieces dropped around the same time from all directions. Some of them are chronicling his time in Phoenix. Some of them are calling him a master manipulator in Toronto. A master manipulator in Toronto. 
Some are citing that TJ Warren was so traumatized by Nate when they were together in Phoenix, he immediately asked for a trade when Nate Bjorkman came on board as the head coach and <laughs> then elected to have season ending in, uh, season ending surgery for an injury he could have played through because he was so tired of Nate. Some now are going after Kevin Pritchard and Chad Buchanan saying, hey, what were they thinking? There makes no sense to be hiring Nate, Mc, or Nate Bjorkman after Nate McMillan. Questioning all of the things about why they made those decisions. Like I said, was it nepotism? What was clouding their judgment? Their friends with him, et cetera, et cetera. Is, yes, there's an Iowa fucking Illuminati running shit out in Indiana. Like, <laughs> wild. And it is taking its toll. The game after the Woj bomb and the ensuing chaos, Bjorken then had to give this like full on pregame presser to address his issues. Yes, it's on me. I take responsibility for the lack of communication. And then you're thinking to yourself, okay, well, if the Pacers really like Nate, then they'll play for him. And then you know what they did? They laid down and they stayed down. They got their <laughs> shit blown out. And not only did they get blown out, an assistant coach, Greg Foster, went after backup center Goga during the game. And Goga then told him, sit your ass down. Shut the fuck, s- sit your ass down. And then they got he got suspended, Greg Foster. Then Bjorkren apparently, I don't know if this is true, met with the Pacers after the loss until 1 a.m. to sort it through. Wait, you just kept them there? I don't know. I don't know. I guess they like we're all having a little powwow. Okay. All right. So then it got worse. Another article came out questioning Nate Bjorkren's mental state. They said some sources around the league. That's what you can say. This is what you say. Some sources around the league. I could say that. Yeah. And then you insert lie. Some sources <laughs> around the league say Nate Bjorkren is having mental issues and possibly headed down towards a mental breakdown. Are you starting to see what I'm seeing? I am. I am. Yeah. (laughs) Nothing is as devastating to you and your professional career to someone questioning whether you are mentally stable. That is the nail in the motherfucking coffin. If that stuck, that's career ruining. You do not come back from Nate's got something wrong with the ticker. You know what I mean? Don't you don't come back from that. Here's the thing, though, about whisper campaigns. It's impossible to refute them. No one knows what's true, what's not true, what's partially true. That was that's kind of how they're designed. You can't figure out what's real and what's not real. But there's something for sure going on with Nate. We don't know what it is. Because the smear campaign is moving from so many different directions to have Bleacher Report, CBS, Woj, Shams, to have everyone come out with articles simultaneously and that not raise a couple of red flags. (laughs) And they're not all the same, all curated off of one article, right? Like you see these aggregators and they really just take Woj and then they write their own article. No, no. This was all its own individual investigative reporting. Okay. All different things, little types of sprinkling in different articles. Hmm. Just different shit. Different shit. Yep. Hmm. 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 But we do know that some of it is completely false. Completely false. How do we know? Enter Chuboy Nick Nurse. <laughs> Nick Nurse came out and discussed after a game all of the chatter surrounding Nate Bjorkman. In case you have to be caught up, Nate. And Nick met each other in 1994 when Nick was one of Nate's assistant coaches at the University of South Dakota. So they go way the fuck back. Jack rabbits. Jack. uh, Coyotes. Okay. Coyotes. Then he went to work for Nick when Nick started the Iowa Energy G League team. And then he came on as one of his top assistants when he became the head coach of the Toronto Raptors. Here is what Nick had to say. Certainly no fun, I'm sure, for him, and it's no fun for me to see, to see um, you know, one, one of my best friends go through that. That's my first thought. Uh, my second thought is I'm not real crazy, but this is the age we live in. I'm not real crazy of the journalistic integrity 
I mean, you know, they find a, a former G League player who, who knows who it was. They won't name anybody. It's a former Western Conference exec. It's a former, it, nothing's legitimate, legitimate to me. And um, that doesn't matter. Doesn't matter. It's out there. Everybody starts running with it. It's, I, I know there was, there was some section I was made aware of today that involved what he, his time at Toronto, and that was 100% false. It was absolutely a bold-faced lie what they printed. So, you know, it hurts to see him go through it, and it hurts that for whatever reason, whoever's behind, you know, this kind of um, reporting – doesn't do better. Oh, doesn't do better. <laughs> this is the bomb. This is the bomb to the Woj bomb. Bald face lie. Listen, if you're Nick Nurse and it's not a lie and you say that's a bold face lie, it will come out that you are fucking lying. So you don't say that unless it's lies. You don't. Yeah, you don't drag yourself into it. You don't it. drag yeah. yourself. You'll say, oh, you know, I don't want to talk about it. You know, Nate and I were close and we had a good time in Toronto, blah, blah. What's going on with him is about him. You don't put yourself and insert yourself and basically send an arrow into the ether against all journalists. Unless there's some lies going on. Unless it's some bad reporting. And n- none of it is true, according to Nick Nurse. And Nick is not the only one who has come out to Nate's defense. This is where it gets fishy to me. Fishy, fishy. Fishy, fishy. Former players have come out in complete support of Bjorkren. Fred Van Fleet said, if you don't like Nate, you're crazy. There's something wrong with you. (laughs) Kyle Lowry calls Nate the fucking man. Ryan Wolstat, the Raptors beat reporter for the Toronto Sun, said, everyone I've talked to has been effusive It's very high, Mm -hmm. effusive in their praise about him. He literally could not find a bad word about the guy. So if he's a shithead, then you should be able to find plenty of people who are going to give you some negative reviews. Or at least not find this many people to come out and vouch for him. Correct. Pacers guard TJ Warren, the one who elected to have season ending surgery. The one who apparently decided he wanted to be traded as soon as Nate got the head coaching gig, according to Bleacher Report. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. (laughs) Exactly. Replied to the Bleacher Report reporter and said, don't use me to spin your false narratives. I would say that's damning. Tony Buckets. Tony Buckets. And the Indy Star even noted that multiple league sources dispute much of what is being reported. How is it possible that you could find one of the best beat reporters in the league who's, I would say, motivated, highly motivated to corroborate the story because holy shit, and he can't find one negative review about the guy. Right, yeah, no. (laughs) He's with the Raptors, who apparently he was a maniacal, evil genius subverting every bit of information from coming to Nick Nurse. It was like, you can't talk to Nick unless you talk to fucking me. Okay, those people are still working there. Yeah. So if you're the beat reporter for the Toronto Sun, big investigator, big uh, journalistic enterprise, you can't go and talk to those people and they, what, they're not going to tell you the truth? Well, you sure know he wants to after seeing how many clicks this other article is doing. He wants to get his own. Yeah, absolutely. And yeah, if he came up with nothing, that that's that that's telling. It's a little telling. Only one way to describe it. Organized smear campaign designed to take Nate Bjorkren down. But why? That's the big question. It's like, what's the motive? Why would someone want to go through all of these hoops? I've never seen an article like this. I've never seen so (laughs) many damning statements made against a guy who's just getting his start as a head coach. What is the motive? Who benefits from Nate being fired? And Furthermore, who benefits from an overhaul of the Pacers organization as a whole? Because what this feels like is not just Nate that's going to get fired, maybe, or that they want to be fired, maybe. It's Kevin Pritchard and it's Chad Buchanan. If someone goes down, though, someone else steps in their place, right? Mm. If it's coordinated and strategic, it is a group and it is designed to cause harm therefore meets said definition of a fucking conspiracy. We have an NBA conspiracy, Marty. (laughs) 
We have an NBA conspiracy. The question remains, who? Who is at the center of this? Because I am pretty certain that this is now, like, truthfully an organized, designed thing, right? Mm -hmm. So who is the mastermind? I think I know, but I'm not going to say. Because that guy is so fucking scary that me even saying it would put a target on my fucking back. So I am not saying a word. But what I will say. Is Robert Ori involved? No. No. (laughs) If Nate does not survive this and the front office does not survive this, then we know who was connected to and pulling the strings behind the scenes based on who steps in. This is the ultimate. This league. 